Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Boston clocks and the 24-hour time system used on U.S. Navy ships. Today we're in the ship's wardroom, and this is one of the larger Boston clocks. They come in a couple of different sizes. Uh, as best as I can tell, all the ones on the ship date back to the World War II period. If they aren't original to the ship, then they're at least that era of manufacture. These clocks are preferred because they don't use power. They are wound up with a key, so even if the ship loses power or something else is going on, it doesn't affect the clocks. The clocks have a Bakelite housing, and they seem to always be mounted on an oak backing piece here, which is then bolted into a bracket on the bulkhead. Winding the clocks up is relatively easy. You can open up the faceplate, and then you've got a key. This one's for multiple different sizes of clocks. That slots right on there. You give it a few turns. Careful not to uh, go until you feel resistance. And as the second handle start going. Three or four turns is usually good for uh, a day. Notice this one has the sticker in it from the 80s that says, do not change. Zulu time. What does Zulu time mean? Well, there's multiple different time zones. Zulu is the military uh, nickname for Greenwich Mean Time. Instead of saying GMT, they just say Zulu. And then all of the other time zones also have a uh, name from the, the phonetic alphabetical system. So next to Zulu, going to the right as you're going around the world, you've got Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, so on and so forth, until you get around to Eastern Standard Time, where Battleship New Jersey currently is, which is Romeo time. And it keeps going, Sierra, Tango, so forth, until you get back across the Atlantic to Greenwich, England, and Zulu time. Why is it important to have a clock that's set to Zulu time? Typically, the battleship keeps records based on the time zone that it is in. A ship can easily transit multiple time zones across a deployment. As you sail across the Pacific, you're crossing half a dozen time zones at least. But you always keep your records and everything based on the time zone you're in. So the clocks are set to that particular time zone. And then you saw how easy it is. Uh, if you need to change the time of the clock, just open it up. And you can uh, move the minute hand around to change your time. So these are really easy to change as needed. However, it is important to have Zulu time on there so you've got a standard time in case you need it. You're talking with people in multiple different time zones. The ship is operating out of Pearl Harbor and they've got to put a call into DC that's going to be, what, six hours off? So important to be able to check that based on GMT. Also, Military clocks uh, run on the 24-hour system. The crew is working around the clock, night and day. So it introduces a lot of confusion if you have to say 7 a.m. versus 7 p.m. or when are you starting your work shift? At 7. Well, is that 7 in the morning or 7 at night? Because there are shifts that cover both hours. So it's just easier to use the 24-hour system. Midnight would be zero, so 1 a.m. is one, and as you go around 12 p.m., noon uh, is 12, and then instead of going to one again at 1 p.m., that becomes 1,300 hours. And it keeps on going around until you get to uh, 2,359 hours, 11.59 p.m., and then when it crosses over to midnight, it becomes zero again. So much easier way of keeping records. I'm told around the world, uh, European countries in particular tend to use the 24-hour clock like the military does as opposed to the 12-hour clock. But uh, hey, here in the United States, we love multiples of 12, 12 inches in a foot, uh, 12 hours in a day, 12 eggs in a pack. Yeah, what can I say? I don't have a full count of how many clocks there are of these around the ship, but it's triple digits. They don't tend to be in individual staterooms, but they do tend to be in offices and communal spaces like this. 
So if you don't have one of these in your stateroom or your birthing compartment, how do you tell what time it is? Well, there is what's called ship's bell times. So uh, the ship's bell is rung every half hour. And it's rung in four hour increments. On a sailing ship, a traditional watch is four hours long. So you're not necessarily ringing it like a cuckoo clock where 12 o'clock is 12 bells. Uh, 12 o'clock is in fact eight bells because it is the end of a four hour watch. You're also not ringing it like a cuckoo clock in that you go ding, ding, ding. I don't know about you guys, but I have trouble counting whether that was 11, 12, uh, 10 dings. So on Navy ships, the bell is always rung in pairs. So if it's the half hour, you get a single ding. If it's an hour, you get two dings back to back. So what does, uh, let's say seven bells sound like? That would be So I think that's a much easier way to count the number of bells. You got three pairs and then a single there at the end. And that goes all the way back to sailing ships when you didn't have a wristwatch or a, uh, a clock at all. So by the ship's bell, there would be a half hourglass. It's like an hourglass, only it has half as much sand in it. And every half hour, you flip that over and you ring the bells to let everyone know, just like a cuckoo clock. On an old wooden ship, you can easily hear this throughout the entire ship. A typical watch on a wooden ship was four hours long. So you're ringing one bell at the first half hour of the watch, all the way up to eight bells at the fourth hour of the watch. That is when your watch either begins or ends. So at eight bells, your watch changes. Because the Navy never lets progress stand in the way of tradition, that same system is used on modern ships. On the battleship New Jersey, we've got it playing over our 1MC system. Ringing the ship's bell cannot be heard through all 1,600 rooms on board, so instead, it plays through the general announcing system. The watches on this ship aren't necessarily four hours long, but sailors are still trained to know the old sailing ship system. So at noon, it's eight bells, at 12.30, it's one bell, one o'clock, two bells, so on and so forth, all the way up until eight bells at four o'clock. That's the end of the afternoon watch. Uh, and then you go into other watches, same thing as you go all the way around the uh, clock. It's not so much to tell you what hour it is specifically, uh, it's more to tell you where in your watch you are. And now it's more played as a tradition. So in your personal life or your work, do you use 24-hour clocks or 12-hour clocks? I personally prefer the 24-hour clock, but have issues finding a wristwatch that does that, so sometimes it's a mix. My computer is set to the 24-hour clock, though. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support, and there's a link in the description below for ways you can donate to help the museum out. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.